say luck is when opportunity meets preparation. What are some of the most important lessons you've learned when it comes to to closing? Because I think, first of all, New York City, one of the most competitive real estate market in yeah. the world, right? Sure. You have so many agents, so many brokers, right? And with you, one of the greatest closers sure. in New York City. Yeah. Like, what are some of the things you've learned when it comes to sales? From like not good in sales, yeah. like a sales amateur sure. to now, right, a master. Yeah. I would say the the biggest tip that I can give to anybody, and it's a question that gets asked to me all the time, mm. because people have a hard time with it. Mm. Like, how do I close? How do I close? How do I close? Mm. But it's if you think about it that way then it's automatically going to be hard because you're thinking about it like something that happens at the end of a relationship mm. or at the end of a transaction. I like that. I like so that. for me, what I tell everyone on my team, what I try to tell everybody is you you close first, like at the beginning, mm. you, meaning you set expectations. Mm. So if you're a client, I'm going to meet you and I want yes. to show you houses. Yes. I don't just skirt around the issue, kind of talk about things, go show you houses for two months and then try to figure out how I'm going to talk to you about making offers and doing that because you've now just set expectations mm. this entire time for two months that you're just gonna go see houses. Mm. And then it, of course it's gonna be weird to try to quote unquote close. Wait till the end. Right, right to wait till the end. Mm. So if you start the expectations early, mm. right, which is the best part about sales compared right. to like dating, yes. right? But in sales, you can start the expectation early. It's That's like, right. okay, I am I am the greatest real estate agent in the history of the world, mm. right? I sell more than anybody else. This is how this process works, mm. just so you're aware. Mm. Let's see eliminate a lot of options. Let's narrow down the 10 best options for you to buy now. Mm. We're gonna go see them over the next couple days mm. and then we're gonna figure out which three we like the most and which one we're gonna make offers on. Sound mm. good? Mm. Nothing is final, nothing's forever. Like that's the way this process works. Mm. And then you get to know them, you hang mm. out. But at mm. least the first thing you did was set up how the process works. So you're not really closing them, mm. you're just following the process. Mm. And everybody is okay following a process. Mm. You just can't do it like, like I said, like dating. Like you can't sit down at a bar and tap someone on the shoulder and be like, all right, this is how this is gonna go, right? We're gonna yes. talk for 10 minutes, I'm gonna yes. buy you a drink, and you're gonna come home with me, sound good? Yeah, it doesn't work that Your way. place on mine, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 you would, yeah, it would be very hard to close that way. That's right. Then from there, so, what you're saying is setting the agenda, setting setting the expectation. Yeah, set the knowing process. Knowing the outcome. And also qualify the prospect. Yeah, of course. Right? If it's, it's a qualified prospect. And from there... Yeah, because if they don't like it, or if they give you pushback, then and they're you, not into it, or they, they and they're like... they may not ready. Yeah, or they say, oh, no, I would, yeah, or I, I wouldn't be ready to make offers so soon. I, I, this process takes six months, right? Mm. That's a conversation you want to have at the beginning mm. and not at the end, which mm. is oftentimes why closing for people who don't set expectations can be really, really hard. Mm. And so it's really, really easy to do. All you have to do is have a conversation because people, like what I tell people all the time and what I put in the book is like, no one likes to be sold, right? And another way to say that is no one likes to be closed. That's correct. So no one likes to be sold. They want to make decisions. But right? people love shopping with their friends. Correct. Like how often, like there's malls everywhere, retail, Correct. everything. Like the people love shopping. It right. makes them feel good. And they like doing it with their friends. Yes. So if you can make every client at least a short term friend, mm. and then instead of closing them, you set those expectations so they understand the process of the relationship mm. at the beginning, then it's just following doctor's orders. Mm. That's it. You and know? you just bring your expertise in helping them yeah. solving a problem, right? Yeah. And you also, for what it's worth, and sometimes I lose clients this way in the beginning and mm. it's totally fine with me because they're clients that would not be closable. They're not serious anyway. Yeah, is you you kind of lay down the law a little bit. Like if you want to work with me, mm. let's do it. I'm going to find you the best deal possible. I'm the best person to work with. And this is how this process works. Like if you want to shop for a home, yes. you're going to buy one with yes. me. If yes. you don't want to buy one, then, then what, you probably what? shouldn't shop. I can introduce you to another broker. In New York City, there are 80,000 real estate agents. Oh, wow. I'll introduce you to another one who uh, is dead broke and really, really excited to show you nice property. Like, go for it. <laughs> if you want to be a tour. Yeah, you know, if you want someone to like be a tour guide for you. Yes. Uh, but that's not me. I got it, got it. And I'm curious, from there, how did you transition into la la landing on the show, million dollar listing? Oh man, like, my, you know how they say luck? is when opportunity meets preparation. Yes. Like, I 100% believe in that. Like, I'm incredibly lucky to have gotten onto Million Dollar Listing. It really was a shotgun to my career. Uh, what was I, life like before the show, or life like after the show? It, it's hard to say, because I, I don't really remember real estate so much before the show. Like, it was, before. because the, I got into the business at the end of 2008. Mm. I was still kind of acting slash hand modeling for a year. Mm. So to the end of 2009, mm. 
and Million Dollar Listing casted in March of 2010. Wow. So I'd really only decided that, you know what, I'm gonna do real estate right at the end of 2009, early 2010. Three months later, I went to the audition for Million Dollar Listing mm. um, with 3,000 real estate agents mm. at the Hudson Hotel in Times Square. Wow. And then it took nine months to, to cast it. Wow. Like a series, like they cut the 3,000, I think it was down to like 1,000. And then it was like a written application. And then they cut that down to 500. And then they took little small videos. And then from the 500, they cut it down to something else. It finally got cut down to 16. And then the casting agents and all the producers came to New York and they followed each, six, each of the 16 around for half a day. Mm where I had to like sell myself hard for half a day. And then they chose the final four. Mm. And they told us, you think real estate's hard? Like talk about television production. Uh, Millionaire listening, there's three people. Yes. Right? And so they said, we're gonna film the entire first season of the show with four of you. Oh, one would not be used. One we Ooh. will cut. Oh, wow. So make sure you bring your oh. A game. Wow. So like I lost 20 pounds from stress. Like my boss was all over me. Wow. And they would come to me and they'd say, you know, Ryan, um, this is a really cool property. You know, Frederick is uh, filming with us later for something that's $20 million more and he's got a Kardashian. But it's okay, do this. I'm sure you'll make the show. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Thank oh. you for the confidence yeah. booster, right? Exactly. Thank you so much. <laughs> but listen, it, it worked, right? Because I would do my thing and then afterwards I'd be making phone calls, phone calls, phone calls. Yes because I didn't want to get fired. Mm. I didn't want to get cut from a real estate reality show. And at the end, then we, you know, then I made it. Yes. Um, and that's kind of how And, and from there, what happened to your career? Honestly, not as much as you would think. Really? It's, it's not like an overnight thing. I mean, listen, Million Dollar Listing happened for me because I, in my opinion, for me, right, like Frederick and Michael Lorber were already in the mm. business for a long time. Mm. Um, Frederick is 10 years older than I am. Yes. Right, so I was like, I was in my mid, what was I? I was 25. Mm. I had barely, I've been renting apartments in Koreatown. Mm. Like my biggest deal at that point had been like a tiny little sale and a co-op that I had to personally paint. Wow. I think for like $369,000. Wow. Uh, but I sold myself hard. Yes. Um, and you know, I had to, you know, really, really become the broker that I, I knew that I could be mm. uh, as quickly as possible. And so the show didn't help me with anything. They don't make phone calls for me. They don't call clients. They don't do anything. Mm. What it forced me to do was pick up the phone and put myself in situations that I otherwise wouldn't have done and do it on weekends and do it late at night. So, so instead of going home, mm. what it, really, it was like a metaphorical shotgun to the head that you better be successful or we're gonna publicly embarrass you to 25 million people. Yes. So it's not a real thing. It's not like someone gave me a handout or helped me. It was yes. this thing in my head that told me, I have to now be the greatest real estate agent that New York has ever seen or my life is gonna end. And like that, that fear of like death in my brain that like my back up against that wall is really what pushed me to be where I am today. So we filmed the show starting at the end of 2010. The whole first season went through the middle of 2011. The show didn't come out till March of 2012. Mm. So then there's two extra years there where I'm trying to be the best real estate agent I can. Show comes out, nothing happens. Wow. I guess I would expect show comes out, yeah. your phone will ring off the hook and say, hey, Ryan, we want to buy from you. You yeah, know, yeah. I want to launch you to list my property and you things think like so. that. Yeah, I would think that. No, yeah, no not at no, all. No, no. I mean, when was the last time you like watched TV at night with, you know, with Jenny and then picked up the phone and called somebody you saw on TV? That's true. Right? That's true. Never happens. That's true. Because one, like, so I do the show to get business. And then the phone didn't ring. And so I'm sitting there, my boss is sitting there. We're all like, okay, show aired last night. Today's gonna be insane. I talk about it in the book too. It's like oh, this wow. crazy day where we this came in. This is so good. And then it was like, by the end of the day, no one called, Nothing. no one cared. Yes. I bumped into one person on the show, on the street that day. I was like, hey, are you on that new, are you that? The are guy. You, yeah, are you that guy? Uh, yeah, you're kind of funny. And then walked away and I was like, oh, great. Wow, <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. So really it was a matter of me going around and telling everybody, like being being a shameless self-promoter because if no one promotes myself, then no one's gonna know about me so I have to scream it from a mountaintop, mm. right? So all of my successes, for better and for worse, kind of everything that I've ever done, I have to put it out there myself so that mm. people know about it. Mm. That's what YouTube is for, like you know this better yeah, than anybody media, else, right? right? That's social media, that's email, that's direct mail, that's using the phones, that's talking to people on the street um, and kind of being your own biggest fan.